Welcome to the Lens of Possibility Workshop. I'm your host, Kevin Carroll. It's all about how you see your potential, your power, and your voice. My gosh, we got a great guest today. I can't wait for you all to engage with him. I'm welcoming Mike McGalliard. He is going to share a bit about his story, but this conversation is going to be about other. Mike, welcome to the workshop. It's so good to reconnect with you. Good to see you again, Kevin. Uh, good to be here. I'm excited for the conversation. Absolutely. And so, Mike, I know that you and I have some history, so I'm sure this is going to be a robust conversation. But for those of you who have, you know, our viewers and our listeners who haven't met you before, can you give a little brief background bio about yourself, please? Yeah, for sure. Don't want to bore you, so I'll be quick. But most of my life, I've been a teacher. That's, that's the thing I associate with most. Or at least I did until I became a dad. So a teacher, a dad, and, uh, and now I'm the executive director of Yellow. You've always been about teaching and lifting up the next gen. And that's what I love about yeah. our relationship because we have that in common. And I think, you know, this conversation around other, how I frame it is how can you be uncommon and how you can be unique? To know those things about me that are different and to be okay with it. And even more to like, like it. No, I love that. And, and I think that's so good for, you know, our, our young viewers tuning in and listening to what you just said, because there's probably countless people who have felt that same way, right? That why am I different? Why can't I just be like everyone else? I just want to fit in. And was there a specific moment that was like an unlock for you that made you be okay with being different? Was, is there, can you point to a moment that you, makes you go, oh, that was that moment where my possibility got unlocked. I remember like something I was obsessed with, something that I thought just, you know, physically that just made me look different and a bit awkward. And someone gave me a compliment. I'm like, oh, okay, I guess we can see it differently then. People see it differently. It's not all the same. And I, I think it was just simply having my glasses on and someone said, oh, I like your frames. Mm. The fact that you got that first compliment and it was strange to you because yeah. you were used to ridicule, people teasing, pointing out that you were different and you didn't want that. But then you get this moment. Can you describe what that feeling was? Like, you know, when, when you realized, no, that was a compliment. Did you have a visceral response to that? Did you feel something? I mean, look, whenever those things happen, right? Where you have a view of something, uh, usually it's a view about yourself, your worth, the way you look, whatever it is. And someone says something different and you're like, oh, uh, maybe I'm wrong. Maybe, maybe I'm wrong about it. Mm -hmm. Not to put too much um, stake on someone else's perspective, but sometimes it's a little perspective shift is what you need. And it's not always about the awkward things that make us different. It's the cool mm -hmm. things too that make us different. So mm -hmm. I think about the collection of stuff that makes Mike different. I remember it's not just me with a funny Coke bottle of glasses. Can you point to anyone or 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 different groups of people that were helpful that way and helping you to celebrate. I love that you said the things that you were good about, that you were good at. I think I, I got to give a, a shout out to my, my pops on that one. Um, my dad is, so he's got the Einstein hair and he's a scientist. He's a real life mad scientist, my dad. He's so kind. Um, he doesn't care about like, what he looks like. He's not obsessed about how he presents himself. He's in his ideas. He loves sharing his, his, his beliefs and his opinions. Um, he loves being nice to people. I love that. And it, as you were saying that, of course, my heart smiled because I understand the power of what your dad was doing. He's like, look, I fly my free flag every day, dude. I'm good with me, <laughs> right? And so the fact that your dad was so comfortable, the thing that you talked about, and confident that I am who I am. Take me for who I am, but I'm going to do me. And I think there's something really magical about having someone modeling that for you. You can learn from a lot of different people about how to be confident in you, right? And how to do you and how to celebrate your uniqueness and how you're uncommon. And so your dad is one, did you have a teacher? Well, yeah, I, for sure. I had, I had so many teachers who, who, uh, who would give you that fresh perspective on yourself. 
And, and, you know, they would say things about, they would say things to you that would build you up, but they give you specific examples. So it's one thing to say, you know, like, hey, I'm really proud of you, or hey, you did a really good job. It's another thing to say, hey, you did a really good job on X, or I'm really proud of you because of Y. And you give a reason mm. to, a, to a child, and that sticks. As a young person thinking about this, you can have subtleties and nuance to yourself. You can have these things that maybe aren't exactly like everyone else. And growing in your confidence, finding supportive plus demanding people in your life that tell you that's great. We all want to be celebrated for whatever we bring unique. Give them space, be curious, ask great questions, keep showing up. I think that's one yeah. thing, right? Yeah, keep showing up. There's a, um, I was talking with a friend about this just recently and you know, she was asking me like, what's the secret to connecting with kids who, who have you, like they have, they have a firewall between you and, mm. and them and what's the secret to connecting? But I, I answered my friend, I said, you know, um, the secret, if there's a secret is, is uh, consistent, authentic enthusiasm. I love yeah. that, Mike, I love yeah. that. And that, I think that circles back to like the theme of this conversation about otherness and difference is like, like, don't look at me like I'm different. Look at me like, oh, I want to understand you. And, um, and, the, and cause what is the different thing about me and the different thing about you is the thing that makes us unique in the world. And that's the thing that's, they call that a superpower. That's the thing that can have outsized impact on the world. That thing that makes us different. To me, when you say being understood is being celebrated. We talked about bringing something, bringing symbols of this sort of thing. And so for a while I was like, what do I bring? That's like a really, what do I bring to this conversation? That's a really um, significant symbol of, for me, of this other idea and difference and what it means to me. And it's a, it's journaling. These are all, like, these are all journals over the years that I keep. I do it old school too. Like I write. And so pen's very important to me. I'm even doing it while we're talking. I'm writing down the thoughts, ideas, um, but like keeping these. I didn't even start them until late in life. I started it around, this one's probably, this is one of my first ones. This is around 20, I'm, I'm gonna date myself. This is my yeah, young Yeah, it's 20s. all good. Yes, well yes, 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 <laughs> yes. Did you start that one when you were in college? I started this one just getting out of college, yeah. And and it, um, I, I did it because I was going through crisis. Like the who am, I, who am I crisis? A lot of folks go through different stages in their life. When you're young, when you're old, sometimes multiple times in your life, right? And every time I've gone through a crisis stage, or even when I'm in a good stage, I'll start writing. And when I'm in a crisis, writing gets me through it. What, you know, I mean, we all are doing it already, right? You're 13, you're trying to figure yourself out. That's the way it is. In, in fact, at 13, you're going through crazy stuff because at 13 or around 13, you know, the way you were raised up as a child, your brain's getting ready to grow again. At 13, your brain's getting ready to flourish like a garden. So what it does is it prunes itself, mm. right? When a garden gets ready to flourish, you know, in springtime, you gotta, you gotta cut off the older branches and kind of cut it down and then it can grow like crazy. So that's what a 13 year old brain is doing. It's mm. cutting back, getting ready to blossom into adulthood. You know, at 13, that it is this really, monumental moment right because you're shedding right it's almost like what, what malting right that snakes are like yeah, shedding yeah, right, right right that Thanks. layer to to put on a new shiny brilliant one and there's going to be lots of questioning there's going to be lots of doubt there's mm. going to be lots of challenging and the adults in your life and the people that are of influence and your friends right? Everyone needs to understand this is part of that process. And I think that's one of the challenges for a lot of young people is I don't have the words yet to explain what I'm feeling. So I love your journal idea. Write your thoughts, do a little project, check in with yourself. Honestly, have a nice conversation with a friend. That's honest. Talk about how you feel. Um, you got to have trusting friends to be able to have those kind of conversations. Um, and I think the simplest thing to do is simply write in a journal how you're feeling. It's your private space, so just let it out, how you're feeling. I think, Mike, what you've been sharing and all these insights and I think are wide-ranging conversation. Yeah. But ultimately, what I, I, I love about your approach to things 
I'll just go back to that consistency, that authenticity, and that enthusiasm. And I think that's what you're always going to be bringing. You're, that's going to be you. That's your other. That's your uniqueness. That's what makes you uncommon is those three things. You're going to be consistent. You're going to be authentic. You're going to be enthusiastic. And you're going to do it in your way. And I love the last part that you said, and it's not always going to be perfect. And it's messy. And I will make mistakes. All that is, I think, so rich and valuable for young people to hear and to understand that they have time. Yeah. They have time. I like that. That's right. You have time. And it's a journey for sure. Is there any last thing you'd like to leave, you know, our viewers, our students, our young people, our next generation with that um, you think could be that unlock, that cheat code for them? Okay. So I know you. We all do because we were the same age at some point. Is what I know. You got crazy ideas. You have some crazy ideas. And there are times when that idea like actually feels like, oh, it could be real. It could be a dream. It could be something you want to do, build, be, whatever it is. Um, just do a little something to, to, to test that idea out. Put it in the world. Mike, I so appreciate the conversation. Love you, brother. Take care now. Mad love. Be well. You too. Everybody needs to take their breath because that was so insightful. Mike McGalliard shared so many amazing thoughts and ideas around how to celebrate your other, how to celebrate how you're uncommon, how to celebrate how you're unique. You can start that now. Go off digital, go on the analog, grab a piece of paper and start writing down your thoughts or use your phone and just put it in your notes, but just have that reflective time that time to yourself, schedule it on your calendar if you need to. And then when you come out of that and you've written it down, maybe you wanna share that, maybe it's not every day, but have someone you can go to that you can share that unconditionally. Judgment-free zone. Who is that person in your life or people in your life? Because you can do the same for them. So we're gonna ask you to find yours, to find that potential, your power and your voice. Let's find that object, that thing that represents your other, that makes you unique and different. You can find that as an object, you can take a picture of it or you can draw it, but we want you to find yours. So I hope that you were listening. I hope you learned something and I hope you're now on the quest to find yours. Listen, this Lens of Possibility workshop, this one that we just did on other, was powerful and revealing. You wanna be understood? Do the work first on yourself. Have the courage to share that story, your story, the story that makes you unique, the story that makes you celebrated, your other story. Thank you so much for your time and attention. Be well, find yours. <laughs>